Good afternoon, ladies and gents. You're listening to Way Out Radio, the very best punk, ska and reggae station around. Right now, we're going to drop in an amazing band, Drones. Um, they're a new band and I think they're going to be big. I just like got this really good feeling about them. I'm loving their vibe and it's just so different, but so like needed right now. So we're speaking to the lead singer, Lois. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Thanks for those kind words. Picking <laughs> me up on this Tuesday. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta happen <laughs> so uh you're releasing the new album 12th of february our hell is right here yeah i uh, can't wait for it to release um yeah it's been a long time coming for us uh yeah we kind of recorded it like sort of just before last lockdown so most of it was kind of done by like march um and then we were just finishing bits off even though it was like actually like a few little vocal bits that were kind of still unwritten as well like so we had to finish it all off over the lockdown period. So it's kind of hard trying to piece it all together. So yeah, it just kind of feels like it's been a long time coming. So yeah, we're excited to get it out there. Cool. Because when I heard the title, Our Hell Is Right Here, I was just kind of like, oh, it's about lockdown. But you wrote it before lockdown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you were already there. Yeah. We were like, our hell's right here. And then we were, lockdown was like, hold my beer. <laughs> yeah. Nice one. So tell us a bit about... Um, locked your records those guys are like gunning for you at the moment they're working with you how did that have come about yeah so drones have been working with lockjaw since pretty much the beginning um so they did our last record as well exiled uh yeah it's great working with those guys they're very keen and on it so yeah it's good to be working with uh, lockjaw we've just started working with thousand island records as well who's our um canadian and american label so it's good to kind of have like a solid label both sides of the pond so that's nice yeah, definitely. Um, just for like, because we're a community station and there's a lot of artists that listen in and musicians and like mm-hmm. young kids that are like wanting that. So can you give yeah. us any advice of like how you brought your team together in, in that yeah. front? Yeah, I mean, our, our team's actually grown quite a lot over the last year, to be honest. Um, so we've kind of just started getting like management and, and proper booking agent and everything. Um, but oh. I'd just say like go to shows <laughs> like because those kind of people love music love live music so that's why you'll find everyone so just meet people at shows and just just do what you love basically and then you'll 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 meet the right people eventually yeah sweet yeah. thank you um so I've been watching the video Josephine's so it's kind of like Wallace and Gromit meets Thunderbirds <laughs> like some yes. crazy stop motion thing going on and there's a pole dancing alien which goes on yeah. for way too long <laughs> 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 yeah, it does get a bit awkward, doesn't it? <laughs> I like the bit where the uh, the lacy underwear is thrown over Mitchell's head. <laughs> we went we're first time. <laughs> he was like when we made that video, the guy was like, "Well, what do you want the concept to be?" So we kind of like gave him like this loose idea about like us going to another planet and then like going to a bar and obviously getting drunk and whatever, and then it all ending the way it does. If you haven't seen it, I'll try not to ruin it. Um, <laughs> Then he like sent it back, and I remember watching that little clip where the, like underwear gets thrown over Mitchell, and I was like, "Oh wow! Like this is is this crossing lines? Have we gone to like a, a new level or what?" But yeah, it's good. Wicked. So, like, what inspired using like stop motion, and like, was it because you guys couldn't meet up for lockdown, or? Yeah, partially. Um, we knew that we wanted to do something uh involving like a, a creative art worker but we didn't know that it would be stop motion like to be honest i'd kind of not even considered claymation because i thought it took a long claymation, time claymation that's what it's called yeah <laughs> officially <laughs> i'm in the know uh but yeah so we found william his name is and he'd kind of only done like kids program stuff before so it was all like very kind of um what's the word pg <laughs> and then we were like can you make some uh, stripper aliens please <laughs> <Just watch out. laughs> so yeah I think it was a bit different for him as well but I was saying this the other day like he turned it around so quickly he made that yeah. whole video in like I think it was like that is in made that made characters and the sets and everything it was what? between like two and three months whoa um, that's fast because yeah, obviously like, to finish it was crazy yeah, because I know I know a little bit. I know like your eyes can see like twenty one frames per second. So like to do those kind of like little Wallace and Gromity things, it's pretty intense, isn't it? Like really yeah. time consuming. Yeah, to, like, he move them. Was, yeah, he said it was like ten seconds a day, pretty much that he'd kind of film. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Good on him. <laughs> Cheers, William. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. So, tell us a bit about um, 
how much you've been able to meet up at like this year and like what's yeah what's been going on yeah well uh we've <laughs> yeah we snuck in a couple of band practices over last summer when we could all meet up but um yeah obviously it's been a bit weird we also changed one of our guitarists so mm. um our old guitarist rob left the band probably like april time i think it was um, and tom joined us and so it's kind of weird that like we've gone through this whole process with like almost having like had a guitar new guitarist for like pretty much eight months now and like we haven't yeah. played any shows or like barely met up so it's pretty weird so we're yeah we're really excited to get back out there and gigging again when everything goes back to normal I know it's crazy to think that the last time we were all like at festivals was not not a year ago like a year and a half ago like what mm-hmm. <laughs> like what <laughs> like what tell us a bit about like the production mixing mastering I mean you worked with Tim Kramer signal house studios is that yeah. right yeah kramer he's our guitar kramer. So, so um yeah it's very much in house so tim has his own studio and records other bands as his kind of like um main job and cool. then so obviously having him be so talented at that obviously helps a lot with the band so yeah th- just like the last record we did we did with tim as well so he recorded produced mixed um and mastered i think this one um yeah so like on the last record there was a guy called Thomas Michener who recorded the drums and and kind of mixed those together so this time it was it was pretty much all on Tim so he's done like Mm. an incredible job uh and yeah it was a bit although he had like a lot of time to do it because of lockdown and everything like to get the mixes done it kind of put more pressure on him I think because like the more time you have with that kind of thing the more you find little bits that you're unhappy with and you just keep going around and around in circles yeah so it was both like a positive and a negative experience I think for him but it sounds mm. incredible and I'm happy with it so <laughs> yeah I mean that's that's the most important thing I mean a lot of bands that have done it it's not even the DIY way because you're saying this guy's got professional studio that he's like yeah. built and stuff but like just doing it in-house like that it can go either way it can either yeah. like tear you apart because <laughs> everybody's just like that's not what I want and like you can be personal with people who you're in a band with in a way you can't with someone you're paying, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so even like recording vocals and stuff, just having just me and Tim there. And obviously he's written, like we've written the songs together and we mm. know how exactly how we want them to sound. So it's nice to just have like the two of you and not having like any external voices saying, oh, why don't you do it like this? When you're like, I just want to do it like this. Yeah, no, that can be out, hard. Yeah, it's come yeah. out the way we want it, so yeah definitely like I in my experience I I play drums and I've been in like professional setting and it's like I I played something kind of badly like I just played the kick out of time for a minute and the guy was just like don't worry I'll just fix it and I was like nah like let me me do it again because now I'm gonna listen to this record and be like oh he just quantized that and like moved on and then I've been on the other side where we've done it DIY and I've just been like and they've just been like oh do eight or ten takes per song and I'm like do you know how hard it is to like play the drums like eight times in a row like fully yeah. passionately like it's bloody like it's it's serious awesome. workout <laughs> and because you're thinking so hard about like because obviously like watching our drum Mitchell do it like you're thinking so hard about not messing up any single little part it's not like playing a live set you know like eight songs yeah away. yeah it's, it's totally different you're just yeah mentally there as well as physically yeah exactly okay so that went well tick um oh I wanted to ask what other projects has he produced um but like you're saying he's kind of casual guy yeah 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 um so he's done he's doing stuff with Midwich Cuckoos at the moment he's Leslie from our label um Lockjaw so he's doing that at the moment I haven't heard any of it yet but he said it's going well so that's cool I think that's kind of what he's working on at the moment yeah he does all kinds of stuff he also does a lot like video work and and um adverts and stuff he's so fancy <laughs> <laughs> that is fancy <laughs> um so i've noticed on your youtube channel you guys have been doing something a bit different which is like showing your fans the guitar tutorials of how to play your song so mm-hmm. i mean how did that come about yeah i mean we're just trying to find ways almost to keep ourselves busy as well like <laughs> obviously not being able to play live shows um we just want to interact with people more because it's 
it's a difficult time for everyone obviously not having that like um personal engagement I guess mm. um and at the moment it just kind of it kind of felt like we were just kind of dropping songs and then not getting any other kind of content out there so we just wanted to yeah just kind of interact with people more basically nice if anyone's learned it learn it I want to hear it let me know <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they will I'll have a go <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can smash out the drums yeah <laughs> to get do you to play a... guitar as well I do a bit not yeah. properly like I can play a few chords and stuff but yeah I've always played guitar like in my bedroom that's it yeah bedroom <laughs> guitarist me too I'm terrible <laughs> I've done like a couple of gigs on bass, but I look ridiculous because I'm pretty short. So I just look like <laughs> as the bass is as long as me. <laughs> Can't quite reach that end of the <laughs> yeah. I'm like, where's that note? Jeez. <laughs> um, so like some of the bands that you guys are fans of, because like I feel like your kind of mm-hmm. artwork and your sound is a little bit like ghost, which I like. But oh yeah. What do you think? <laughs> thing what like the cross and the religious aspect well, yeah and that mask the yeah. face and stuff and the mask yeah yeah do you know what? i hadn't thought about that but yeah now you say it i agree that's not a bad <laughs> thing at all <laughs> no definitely not that guy's crazy apparently before he was famous like the lead singer of ghost he like wanted to go on tour with like a huge sheet of glass that was like 14 what? foot wide or something and and every every record label was that was like I know you're a visionary, but it's just not when happening. It, like what to like project through it? Or, like, just to have on stage. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get the venue to like knock out some windows. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. these, it's so stupid from every angle that you look at it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, influences and like, yeah, some of the kind of bands that you would bring to the studio and be like, let's try and sound a bit like this or whatever. Mm um I guess I don't know I guess it all just comes from whatever music we're listening to at the time mm. um but every time someone's like oh what are your influences we always mm. go back to the old school like uh Annie Flag, Rise Against yeah that kind of stuff because that's the kind of stuff that we most of us grew up on even like like the Bronx and um Tim Love's like Comeback Kid uh I grew up listening to more like pop punk side of things like New Found Glory and all that kind of stuff um, but nowadays we we kind of listen to all kinds of stuff really. Mitchell and Kerr very much listen to their punk. I kind of drifted and went a little bit pop way. <laughs> yeah, and I like a lot of like singer songwriters, like like Phoebe Bridges and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's cool. just kind of whatever we're listening to at the time, basically. And um, like being a fan of Anti Flag, like yeah. do you have do you have like a anarchist kind of vibe? Or, like, are you quite an ethical band? Yeah, I mean, our last record was very much um, socio-political, I guess. Like, it was, so it was, like, concept record about the refugee crisis. Oh, um, yeah, I was going to ask about that. I'll just, yeah. r- just bring the listeners in. So, three years ago, they released a video for Territories, and uh, it starts off with a politician getting riled up, talking to a news <laughs> reporter, and he, he's just saying about, like, shutting down the borders, kind of a Nigel farage type person. But, yeah, carry on. <laughs> yeah, and I feel a little bit sorry for the actor now because he's probably just, like, if anyone sees him in the street, they'll be like, you're like... Oh, yeah, and side note, <laughs> obviously, the band are against that. There's there's no <laughs> right-wing <laughs> aspect to this. That, the- yeah, it's anti, it's very... Yeah, like right wing punk. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> I just That's realized like I was like, I need to clear this up. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that that was like a very, um, I guess it's funny because like the word political to me just brings up pictures of idiots in in suits. <laughs> but <laughs> you know that for me, it's like that that album was about real world issues, and you know, bigger than bigger than the individual kind of issues um whereas this record there are songs definitely still about world issues but there's definitely more personal songs in there as well um Mm. and yeah so that's that's the biggest difference i think between the last record and this one um that's not to say that obviously we've let go of that at all like that's just not the case like the reason that we wrote the last record is because it's something that we all cared about and that was obviously important important and still is important to us um, so we'll always just write about whatever feels important at the time, basically. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. And of course, like we didn't realize Brexit was going to go on this long. So you can't just like raise your whole career on like <laughs> the political <laughs> side of things. And just like we're still having coronavirus and Brexit. Here's like 15 more songs. <laughs> yeah, I'm just starting to hear all the um, lockdown songs coming out now. Um, so, yeah, before we move on to like the new album and the things that are going into this, I just want to like go back to your your previous album. I mean, you did talk about Brexit and that sort of thing and the border control. Yeah. Um, how do you feel at the moment? Because obviously musicians have been robbed right now of their right to tour Europe, which is like devastating for everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so like we as a band have been lucky enough to tour Europe, you know, crossing the channel whatever in in the um what's it called hero channel uh and <laughs> yeah. that being yeah like ugh, it just sucks and it doesn't just suck for us but like other bands you know starting out that want to have that experience like it just it broadens it broadens the band's idea of what touring is because touring the uk is awesome but there is it, it's just so different to like touring mm, europe and yeah. and in europe the venues um, a lot of them are are uh, run by volunteers and it's just like there's such a like, commu- community vibe out there for a lot of the venues um even like there's one called like uh Groning- Groningen in, in no sorry Vera in Groningen in Netherlands I've probably said that totally wrong um but they're like yeah that's pretty much all run by volunteers and you know they all cook together they cook and sit down and have like a meal with the band before the show and there's a little like room that you you stay in upstairs so it's all really cute oh. so just to, like yeah, for bands to be missing out on those kind of opportunities is is a total shame. And obviously, like, for fans not being able to see bands from either side of the water is, is just rubbish. <laughs> so, yes, it's very sad. Yeah, and I, as you were just chatting there, like, I just realised, it's like, imagine if you couldn't, like, tomorrow, like, Coca-Cola was no longer sold or McDonald's was no longer mm-hmm. so- sold. I know for punks, that sounds like a really good thing. But for, like, the vast majority <laughs> of people, they'd be like, yeah. I really miss that. And nothing's going to fill that gap in the market. People will always miss that. Really? And, like, Europe not being able to have, like, live British music. Like, we got so many good bands that they mm-hmm. miss and they love and they've followed for years. And like nothing's gonna make up for that. It's not like you can just send in a French band or a German band. Like you can to a degree, but there's like there's like all these relationships that have been built up, and it's just like sad to like sever that, you know? Totally. I think I, in my head, I haven't really accepted that that is going to be the way it is. Like uh, I just think I'm being a bit naive and holding on to a bit of hope that it'll all be fine and we'll still be able to tour just the way we did before. But obviously, that's not the case. Um. Sorry, yeah, I'm being a total bummer. I don't mean to be. No, <laughs> I'm just like thinking think about out loud. Really, you would think of being a bummer, but this is this is me. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a drag. Um, so yeah, like another single that you released uh, a while ago is the the raw shank. Is so <laughs> the raw shank test is a psychological test where the subject's perception of ink blots are recorded and then analysed using psychological interpretation so that's very clever stuff i had to research that i had to look at (laughs) psychology you know why are you making me do this i hope it's for a good reason (laughs) yeah uh oh man that seems like digging back now i'm not (laughs) brushing my head anymore this song um but oh shack yeah so yeah it's basically uh the way that you look at things can obviously you could be looking at the same thing as someone else or talking about the same thing as someone else and because you have two different opinions on it you'll you'll literally see it with like different eyes so that was kind of mm-hmm. where the idea for the song title came from um around that song and just the idea that people perceive like immigration and and, and trying to understand someone else's opinion of it the way that they see it mm-hmm. and so that's where that came from but yeah i think tim tim came up with that song title so okay. credit to tim <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys like quite well read? Are you like into um I don't know, psychology, look back at literature, poetry, do you take on a lot of influences like that? Um it's all in there. I'm like <laughs> dot, dot, dot. it's in this soup like... bowl somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really stupid. Um, <laughs> no, I like I like yeah. I like the libertines. <laughs> No, I like reading about space time. <laughs> um, I like to pretend I'm smart, but I'm not. 
yeah, I like to read like Stephen Hawking's books. World exclusive. I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the kind of person though that like gets I get really excited by like physics and I don't yeah. know why. But I'm not <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I have one of those brains, right? Where if I in the moment I can understand some like pretty difficult topics but literally 10 minutes later like it's gone <laughs> I, I can't retain information well at all so like <laughs> if I learn one thing one specific thing about a subject I'll like understand it but then as soon as like yeah literally 10 minutes gone past I'm like no nah, it's gone yeah no I know exactly what you mean. an idiot here but there you go <laughs> Or like I just play punk music, man. Don't ask me questions. <laughs> yeah, made me think. I just <laughs> well, I was gonna say sniff glue then, but I'll have to edit that out. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> um, Actually, at the moment, like, I feel even even dumber because I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you can't like your your memory takes a dive and stuff, doesn't oh, it? Totally. Well, I read that you have to speak to eight people a day to keep your brain like working properly. Oh, really? yeah which is nuts really like just like going to the bus stop and being like hey to an old lady and then going in the shop and like buying something just like all of those little interactions like like, matter so it's kind of (laughs) kind of weird (laughs) okay so um one of the things I really like about your band is that um there's not really any front women that I've seen that are like you I think you're quite unique but you you're real you know it's not like you're trying to be different so I mean Tell me about your tomboyness and <laughs> and uh, yeah, because I'm a tomboy. As a kid, I was like, I'm not wearing dresses. Yeah. I wanted to play with boys' toys, yeah. but you know, um, but yeah, tell me about your experience. Ah oh, man, I take that as a total compliment. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I don't want to be like I'm just me, but I am just me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, growing up, growing up, I didn't really. I actually went to an all-girls school. Um, oh wow! So I didn't, I didn't really feel like I fit in there with a lot of people because you know, growing up as a girl, a lot of girls kind of just want to wear makeup and talk about boys and la 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 and wear dresses. <laughs> but I was like, I wasn't really interested in any of that. So I didn't really form like deep um, friendships until I started going to shows. Really, um, my brother was in bands and stuff. So when I was like 12, 13, he started taking me to. To shows to like either his shows or like different shows whatever like the first prop show I went to was like Newfound Glory when I was it was my 13th birthday I think so I was either like 12 13 and he took me to that and then there oh, was that was it. nuts yeah it was great I was so young so I wasn't allowed to be there so my dad had to like come and stand up on the balcony upstairs <laughs> and I remember there was like a massive mosh pit you know like those mosh pits where everyone goes over like dominoes I yeah was small. I was in the middle of that and I just remember this massive guy picking me up being like you're right <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I've just, I don't know, just been me. And I, yeah, was never into like dresses or anything. But did you have that phase where like you got to like 17 ish and then everyone was kind of going out clubbing and you didn't really know what was what until so you went along <laughs> with it? I definitely had that yeah. awkward phase. And it's annoying. Like looking back, it annoys me because I wish that like I just stuck with me and who I was, like mm. even at the younger stage. Because I feel like I was like more me, then went a little bit. Uh, I feel like I'm missing out on things, and like wanted to go clubbing with the girls and blah blah blah. But I actually really didn't like it. And then yeah. like now I'm on the other side of it, and I feel like totally myself. Yeah, uh, yeah. So just be you. Who cares? Yeah, definitely. Else is doing, you'll find the right people. I have a confession to make. When I was in yeah. Australia a couple of years ago, I was like on tour like DJing and uh, I was staying in a hostel so like I met a bunch of cool girls who were really nice and they were like yeah let's go clubbing and I was just like I hate clubbing (laughs) we went and literally like we got to about an hour in and I was like dancing (laughs) oh no don't get me wrong I like clubbing (laughs) I mean I mean the like you know putting on dresses getting all dolled up and whatever and going out like that was just not me I mean like that side of it oh my god no like EDM and everything I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah, but I just totally bailed and then walked oh, out. You? I walked out. I went home, watched Rick and Morty on my little bunk bed in the hostel and just ate takeaway. And I was just like, this is me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, oh, I love. So did you, um, did you feel like you've like, did you have mates that were kind of like you when you were younger? 
Oh yeah, I had my own club yeah. called the Tomboys. Oh cool. Oh, man. What were those kids when I was? <laughs> I should have been in your club. <laughs> I was. I took it a bit like seriously. I think I was about seven years old, and like my best friend <laughs> turned up in a dress, and I was like, "You're out of the club." <laughs> and her mum told me off, <laughs> but we're still best friends now, so it's, it worked out. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. <Aww. laughs> so bringing up some crazy memories <laughs> um so yeah I mean I bet when you tell people like you're a singer and then they hear drones it's not what they expect I mean what's your what's your experience like being a woman in a rock band and being in the music industry because it's a crazy crazy world mm. um mostly positive um cool. yeah most, mostly positive but uh there's been a couple of experiences where I mean, it's so mostly positive. It's more like the little things, isn't it, that you just kind of get used to. Um, even like, you know, if I walk in into a venue where like the person who's greeting you doesn't know who's playing, or like say you're the support band or whatever, mm. and they don't normally greet me the way they greet the guys in the band because they kind of assume <laughs> that I'm not in it. <laughs> like, oh, it's probably just like someone's girlfriend or whatever. And <laughs> don't know like that I'm I'm with the band, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it's just kind of little things I guess but I've never had like any major like tiffs or anything so, so I think I'm quite lucky in that sense probably yeah oh I gotta say I yeah. love I love that like pub rock vibe where you meet like proper wannabe <laughs> rock stars like I yeah. remember just watching this boy like in a support band he was like 18 or something and he bought like a really expensive like Elvis style mic and he was literally backstage and it was like in a velvet case and he's like just pol- polishing it and then he just looked at me like hey like as if he's super cool and I was like what is going on <laughs> oh bless him probably the best day of his life He's like, do you like my ride? <laughs> I'm going to play this tonight. <laughs> like he's my f 58 man. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I've had had some experiences. I mean, I've talked about them on the show before, really, but just yeah. like people don't expect you to have any talent whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. To look at or whatever. And you're just yeah. like, wait till you see me. I'm going to play drums in a minute. And they're just yeah. like, oh. I thought you was a singer mm. and it's like no nah, I'm, I'm not a singer I'm a drummer yeah you must get <laughs> like, yeah a lot of that it's different um, yeah like there's just like isn't being a drummer like people just don't do they people nah. do just assume that like majority of females if they're with a band that, that they sing I'm like why <laughs> there are so many female musicians like I know why do people jump to that conclusion it's so bizarre yeah so exactly bizarre. And we yeah. do have personalities. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. No, mostly. Yeah. I like, I like physics. I'm smart. <laughs> I love hanging out with guys, though. I love I love blokes. Like, just I love the banter. I love the loyalty. Like, I mean, it's not it's not in any way like negative about mm-hmm. men. It's just a I don't know, like the odd one, I suppose. You just get treated a bit funny, don't you? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and just like. I think just respecting people's space as well like there needs to be more of that at shows like re- respecting female space because it's difficult as a woman sometimes to be in like a crowd mm. and feel safe I think and yeah. in a way that men just don't understand um yeah yeah and do you I ever get people like try and kiss you or like try and like force a hug on you and just like do you mean Hugs, like that yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> like the hug thing yeah (laughs) but yeah just respect people's space respect each other you know it goes both ways as well so yeah that's why I think I play instruments where like there's a huge contraption in front of me like the drums or DJing I'm just like stay out the booth people (laughs) you're putting a barrier between yeah I'm on stage but you can't touch so tell me about the band's coffee because this is like you've gone all out on the merch here like fresh hell coffee yeah man um yes they made a coffee which i have tasted and it is so good and i was surprised (laughs) by how good it was to be honest like i'm kind of new to the coffee drinking game probably only been drinking coffee for like a couple of years um and i just kind of drink whatever's going (laughs) i'm not fancy about it but that's I actually had to go out and buy a cafetiere just so I could drink it because it's filtered coffee. (laughs) But I'm so glad I did. Because it's like, it's got like chocolatey notes in it. Um, Nice. 
which are really powerful like the first like the first time I had it I tasted all that like chocolatey goodness and it was amazing <laughs> um but apparently I didn't store it right apparently I'm gonna keep it in the fridge oh really oh, oh right yeah yeah, so technical. Our, <laughs> yeah our bass player is a secret coffee snob <laughs> so it all came out he was like yeah you should get this one do this I'm like, okay uh, oh, wow. but yeah get it it's great it's good all right so who uh, came up with the idea to sort that out was it the label uh no i think it was mitchell our, our drummer yeah um so we kind of like he designed the label as well oh um, right i think is probably the coolest part about it i really like that the graphics yeah they wicked um and he came up with the the fresh owl idea as well yeah um, nice but at first idea. we were like should we make it really strong to go with like the fresh hell thing but then we were like we don't want to knock people out <laughs> just to be like they'll have one cup and be like i can't take any more yeah and then we went for make subtle. one that people like and then yeah. and then like follow it up with like an extreme version when you expand the brand <laughs> yeah we do like a limited limited edition style yeah knock you off the chair version <laughs> pal <laughs> punk. yeah people would love that because they'll just be like i don't know it's like kind of like a henry rollins thing like the, the sober people and stuff will like want a bit of a kick it'll be good <laughs> people like extreme stuff as well they'll just be like you know i've got to try this because i'm yeah. hard <laughs> it'll be like that um what's that chili that chili challenge i can't remember what yeah it's called, but they, they take like the strong chilies whoever lasts the longest we could do it with coffee <laughs> 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 i might end quite badly a lot of toilet <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, so let's talk about the new album then. Finally got around to it. So you yeah. mentioned uh, on the Lock to Your website that you had like a tough couple of years leading up to mm-hmm. it and um, you went for a divorce, you lost mm-hmm. a family member, um, battling with some mental health stuff. So, I mean, you seem quite young to go through all of that. I mean, what's been going on? Ah, oh, it looks like a steeping. I'm actually Uh Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a rough couple of years, like, and that... I think that's kind of what you know pushed me anyway into writing the more personal stuff like it was just quite heavy and and I I just felt the need to like write it all down and get it all out for therapy basically yeah and I was a bit nervous at first like to be talking about like such personal topics even with like the band because obviously it's quite a jump from (coughs) from the political stuff from before Mm. but they were like just do what you've got to do like and and you know to write stuff that's personal I think it comes across as more um uh honest I guess like you can kind of hear it when you listen to the songs yeah um yeah yeah definitely. yeah and yeah there's, there's a lot of sadness on it but <laughs> it's nice to kind of go through those kind of things and then have like the songs to the other side to like almost as like a little a little trophy to be like well done you made it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and like you've gone the opposite way to most bands because like a lot of pe- bands kind of start with the personal songs and then they have like a big hit and they're just like, "Yeah, I've done it," and then they make it and then they're like, "Oh, I haven't got any problems now. I don't know <laughs> yeah. what to write about. I'll write I'm about right, political famous. activism." Yeah. <laughs> you gone reverse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had the band and then my life fell apart. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. You live yeah. and you learn. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So uh, tell us a little bit about, like, because we talk a lot about mental health on the show. What are some of the things you struggle with? And then, like, how, how are you doing now? Has lockdown made it better or worse? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so I've kind of uh, always experienced levels of depression and anxiety. Yeah. Um. And I didn't really notice. Well, I noticed. I mean, I definitely noticed because it was kind of became a part of me. But I didn't really identify it until probably like five or six years ago. Um, and, you know, I had partners who struggled with mental health as well. Um, a few yeah. different partners who have. And uh, I think I I've pretty much discovered that I, I have something called persistent depressive disorder, um, which okay. is more of like a chronic kind of lesser, less, less intense version of 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 depression basically but it's almost worse in some ways because it's it's non-stop and you basically you basically you learn to believe that it's part of your personality so oh yeah i've met people like that before that um 
you sort of say to them, I don't know, like you try and encourage them, like you're not always yeah. going to feel like this, and they're like, yeah, I am, and you're like, yeah, oh, this is me. <laughs> like, yeah, and 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 you won't always feel like that because what I've kind of just discovered very recently is that it's not part of my personality. It's not actually everyone else doesn't feel like this. It is something that can be you know fixed and worked on. Um, so yeah, I'm actually working with with a psychotherapist at the moment to kind of work through it. Um, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's good. These are positive times. And sometimes it takes something like, you know, lockdown or whatever to just nudge you and be like, you need to sort it out now because, you know, you've got all the time in the world to sit and think about everything at the moment, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I um, read, I read a couple of books that helped me, like uh, mm-hmm. David Goggins' Can't Hurt Me. I don't know if you've heard of that one. No, I haven't heard he, of that one. Oh, uh, I'll send you a link, but he's yeah, just cool. like this badass, like, navy seal guy who like oh. was he was like really fat and he had like a real struggle <laughs> with his confidence and his dad like beat him up all for his childhood oh, and he was just like i was born to lose and he just completely believed that he was like i am like the biggest loser and i will just live like this and there's nothing i could do and then he just something snapped and he just like became this machine and now he's like done all these hell weeks and um mm-hmm. like you know those crazy like triathlons and stuff where yeah, you like yeah. run forever and swim and yeah. cycle and he's just like really amazing he's got youtube videos and stuff but yeah that was a good one to just be like just don't tell yourself that and i don't know he just has oh, this awesome. this cool way about him and then like the russell brand freedom from our addictions was good i don't know if you've read that i haven't no i've heard of that one though it's like a that. you know like <laughs> if you got a drinking problem you do like a 12 step program is mm-hmm. it? yeah <laughs> yeah i was like is it 12 yeah. or 10 <laughs> um <laughs> yeah i have read the book <laughs> um, but yeah it's like a 12-step program for like all of your issues like from yeah. like i don't know just playing tetris too much on your phone to like yeah. swearing or to like serious addiction issues like you know cocaine yeah. heroin it's That's like everything perfect, and you just go through all these steps and it's just like it, it literally tells you to write down everything you can think of that has like upset you in your life from the school bully to things your mom has done to like oh, even wow. small things that uh, yeah it's crazy and you're just like, a long list <laughs> you, you just get it yeah it's a massive list <laughs> you just like literally try and cleanse it out of your system just like right. recognize that these things have happened and just don't let them bury you anymore it's really That's it's a good so book oh uh, yeah there you go gotta read that one as well wow yeah that's crazy the things that you'd like learn if you just talk to people (laughs) and that's the hardest thing isn't it like that first step of like talking to someone like if you have mental health issues um or even if you you feel like you don't like just talking about things is so helpful yeah anyone like and it's, it's crazy how like talking to a therapist who is essentially a stranger can teach you so much about yourself yeah mad yeah, Somebody doesn't know you, just like, oh, yeah, you're feeling this. And you're like, oh, and this is why. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then sometimes you just learn too much. It's just like, I'm quite funny, like most of the time in social situations. And yeah. they're just like, oh, that could be a mask for hidden sadness. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, is <laughs> it? Does it have to be? I thought it was just a funny guy. <laughs> so- <laughs> <laughs> Let me be funny. <laughs> Do you mind me asking? Um, did so you mentioned like about divorce and stuff like mm-hmm. just quickly did you get married quite young then um blah, blah, blah. i i proposed <laughs> <laughs> when i was i like it four okay um so i think i got married when i was 26 yeah so mm-hmm. i'm oh, yeah i'm 29 i am 30 <laughs> on monday i don't know Woo, happy okay. birthday. It's my birthday on the 1st of February. Happy oh, birthday. wow, that's close. <laughs> happy birthday. I know, I'm only, I wanted to keep it secret. I'm only <laughs> for like a few more days and it's so sad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I'm celebrating the last days of my 20s. Yeah. Cool. Do you feel any different from at the beginning of your 20s? That's <laughs> from at the beginning of this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. No, I don't <laughs> Like I, I went through a phase of being really conscious about like my age and just like worrying because, and a lot of it was to do with like being in bands and thinking that like I have to achieve 
X, Y, Z before I, before I turned a certain age. And it was very like, it weighed on me a lot. Um, and, you know, 30 for me was a bit of a milestone of thinking, you know, if I haven't done this by that age. I yeah, especially up. in the music like, world, isn't it? Yeah. And and it, as, as well, being like a female, like I feel like it's heavier on, on women to kind of achieve more younger because. Yeah. Like, it's, and it's so sad that that's the way it is and it shouldn't be. It's almost like you've got to fit it all in your 20s. Isn't yeah. Because you're just like, oh, I'm supposed to have a family like I'm supposed to have a partner kids and a career right now I'm just kind of like where did that time go (laughs) like I get none of those (laughs) where's my stuff (laughs) Uh, it's all good remember when I was 21 I had like quite a few older friends say like 30 34 and they were all just like worrying about I gotta have kids because I'm 20 because I'm 34 and now I'm just like I was just like, oh, wow, that's like nearly 40. That's so old. <laughs> now I'm like, now I'm 28 and I'm just like, what? That's nothing. I'm like, we're all kids. <laughs> I'm like late 20s just going, I just want a dog. Like, <laughs> we need the kids as well. <laughs> I know. Everyone needs a dog in lockdown right oh, now. Okay. It's going to improve everyone. So many everyone's... people have got dogs like in the yeah. last few months. It's insane. I just hope they they keep them. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm a bit nervous about the whole like, dogs the coronavirus dog situation like it'll make me very sad if they become loads that are homeless after this yeah i hope not i mean my uh cousin he just adopted a dog from romania and he's called it rodney because he loves only fools and horses (laughs) (laughs) he he loves that thing (laughs) that thing is pampered more than your normal (laughs) two-year-old it's got a bow tie it's always out (laughs) on the town (laughs) yeah if i had a dog i'd dress it up there not gonna lie (laughs) I'll put a little jacket on it. Yeah, I've only got a couple more questions left. Yeah, that went quite quick. Um, (laughs) So, how have fans reacted to how honest you are as an artist? Um, pretty well. A lot of people have said that talking about, like, I've had a few people message me privately actually about like mental health and stuff, which is really Mm. nice. Um, and it, yeah, it just it, it emphasizes the fact that I think being honest is important. Um, whether it's in music or in life in general <laughs> uh, you know hiding the stuff isn't going to get you anywhere so and I think it becomes obvious in music as well if people don't like if people aren't honest um, yeah. it comes across and you can hear it so yeah definitely it's definitely a positive thing yeah 100 percent. and it's it's hard in the music world where people like try and pigeonhole everything they're like yeah but what's your thing like who are you yeah. how can I keyword this on yeah my, my thing is I'm a person <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm an all-rounder <laughs> I'm a human with a life <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's my vibe <laughs> all right um okay well thank you so much for joining me today and good luck with the album and please let me know where people can get your merch I know you've got some awesome orange vinyl out you've got your own coffee out uh you've gone all out so tell us about getting some merch Cool. Uh, you can go to www.thisisdrones.com and pretty much everything's on there. And you can find all the singles, all the merch and everything. So yeah, head that way. Nice one. We will. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> all right. Cheers. Right, cheers. <laughs> Bye. Hey guys, DJ Ball of Frost here from Way Out Radio, the one and only punk and reggae station broadcasting every week. Go to wayoutradio.com for more. So I just want to tell you guys about the brand new fan club we've just launched. It's absolutely amazing. You can choose from contributing £5, £10 or £20 per month to keep the station alive, pay our guests handsomely and keep music money in the musician's pocket and in the punk world and in the reggae world. So find out more about that at wayoutradio.com. Thank you very much.